What's up, everyone? It's Caddy with Money Vest. So I'm back here in my home office here in Dubai, and uh, we'll be here for you know the next several weeks. We're going to be doing a beta launch for our Money Vest platform uh, very, very soon in the first week of July, and uh, we're kind of you know testing the website, final bugs. I'm kind of resolving all the issues. We're doing a data sync, and of course, working with email setup and authentication. So if you want to access all the features, and again, lock in the pricing. Uh, for the beta launch. Uh, link's going to be down below with the very limited spots left. I'm actually going to be going over uh, the software uh, today and we're going to be analyzing Tesla uh, based on those uh, expectations here uh, for the company. So again, hope you all enjoy this video and find it helpful. If you do, please make sure that you drop a like and of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and again, links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. There is a 51% discount right now for the MoneyVest beta launch and this pricing is going to be locked for you forever because we are paying a lot of for data fees and I want to be very transparent with you. We've got three different APIs that we're paying every single year for data and this is real-time data that you can access uh, and again access all the fundamental analysis, statements, analyst estimates, financial statements, everything for the last 20 plus years and analyst estimates as far as you know 10 years for a lot of different uh you know metrics such as EBITDA earnings cash flows and revenue so we're only going to be charging you one single monthly subscription 29 bucks a month 51 percent off this pricing will go up eventually once it's fully launched and available publicly uh to the entire world right now we're, we're going to be doing an internal launch for members only so first things first, let's go over some of the updates from the last couple of days. Uh, we are in the second quarter of 2024. So Tesla will be reporting delivery numbers, um, you know, at the end of this month, so first week of July, because we'll be done with the second quarter 2024. But, you know, there's been some updates that have been coming out on a monthly basis. So China EV insurance registrations for the week ending in May 26th. Neo 5400, Tesla at 13,100, and BYD at over 55,000 vehicles. And during the May 1st to 26th period, insurance registrations for Neo vehicles were 15,400, Tesla at 43,900, and BYD at over 209,000 vehicles. So BYD most certainly has gained a lot of edge in terms of competition wise have gained a lot of market share over in china of course globally still tesla uh, you know remains at the top spot when it comes to best-selling electric vehicles and having a lot of market share but in china uh, you know byd definitely is posing a lot of threat over to tesla here uh, and this right here is going to be tesla china reports 13,200 vehicle deliveries for the week of 20th to 26 uh, may and marking a good result it implies a year-to-date gap to 2023 continues to reduce for three weeks in a row so we are kind of trailing behind a little bit uh, when it comes to the gap between 2023 and 2024 uh, this again the red one is going to be 2024 and of course the blue one is going to be 2023 and we're right now just slightly trailing a little bit on a week over week basis that the gap really accelerated after week 13 so you can see how you know significant we actually started to see the gap between uh, the delivery numbers uh, over in china for uh for tesla you know from from 2024 compared to 2023 and this is again estimated to narrow in even further and eventually close out the year at a very very strong rate uh wedbush securities dan ives once again reiterating a tesla's price target in the next 12 months so over the next 12 months setting a price target of close to 300 dollars per share so ives predicts tesla's stock will climb to 275 to 300 dollars over the next 12 to 18 months dan ives for those of you who don't know we've interviewed him on the channel he's got a very strong track record he's been very much on point when it comes to technology stocks technology companies and of course his analysis of four of these companies over the next several years uh, with musk's compensation package approval and booming demand in China. The uh, robo-taxi event for Tesla is considered crucial, of course, with expectations very, very high. That's going to be on June 8th. And the shareholder meeting also happening on June 12th. And speaking of the June 13th, June 13th actually is a shareholder rally, a shareholder meeting, a shareholder vote for, uh, for Elon Musk's 2018 performance package of over 55 billion dollars, right? So 57% of their 109 survey respondents expect approval of Elon Musk's comp package, outnumbering the portion of respondents who expect non-approval by two to one. So more than two thirds of investors that responded to the survey expect for this to get voted in favor of this performance award, uh, as opposed to about again, 20, uh, 30 or 33% or something expect 
for it to not get approved. Uh, we've encouraged investors to pay close attention to the June 13 shareholder vote due to its significance to the long-term strategic direction of the company. We believe that CEO Elon Musk needs Tesla now more than ever as AI is a capital game and the broader collection of Elon Musk's businesses may collect collectively invest many tens of billions of dollars in AI infrastructure in the coming years and cost of capital is deterministic for AI supremacy as well. And while impossible to predict the outcome, we expect the event could potentially drive material volatility in Tesla shares. And that is true. I think there's going to be really a lot of volatility for Tesla kind of leading up to that vote. And of course, after the vote as well, uh, we distributed an investor survey. And again, there was a lot of a lot of respondents suggesting majority, 57% expect Elon Musk's compensation package to be approved. And if Elon's comp package is approved, majority, 68% expect Tesla stock price to react positively over the next three trading days. 24% expect Tesla shares up 6 to 10 plus percent. 44% expect Tesla shares up 3 to 5%. And outnumbering those who expect the stock to be down upon approval by almost six times as well. And of course, if Elon's comp is not approved, right? So in the event the package is not approved, the vast majority, 81% of respondents expect the stock price to be down and 54% expect the stock to be down significantly anywhere between 6 and 10%. So it is going to be a net positive if that approval goes through for Tesla and for Elon Musk. Um, and again, obviously, you know, artificial intelligence is the next big wave for uh, for any company out there, right? Including Tesla. Tesla's also got a big, uh, you know, market to capture when it comes to foot full self driving, uh, you know, autonomous driving, full self driving technology and uh, robo taxis again unlocking a huge potential market for the company and thereby uh, only increasing the market share, revenue, sales, deliveries, and of course, at the end of the day, bottom line earnings, making them more efficient as well. So this right here is the uh, results of that survey. Um, what degree of confidence do you have in the approval of Elon Musk's share compensation package on the June 13th shareholder meeting? Um, and again, 16% approval, highly likely. Approval somewhat likely is going to be 41%. And approval and non-approval equally likely is going to be 20%. Non-approval, somewhat likely 16%, and non-approval, highly likely is going to be 7%. So these two numbers, 57% is basically the majority that expect the approval to be somewhat likely to highly likely, 20% or somewhat indecided, and again, about 22 23% or so are going to be expecting non-approval, somewhat likely or highly likely. Um, what is your expected Tesla stock reaction over subsequent three trading days? Uh, and again, majority of people expect prices to go up for Tesla. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think is going to happen for the vote? And of course, for the market's reaction to the vote as well. So comment down below. We'd we'll love to know from you as well. But 68% expecting Tesla to be up modestly to significantly anywhere between 3 to as much as 10% after the vote as well. And the market consensus, it's it's a very small data set. So I, I'll give you that. It's only 109 companies. So it is very, very, very small data set. But uh, but again, it kind of, uh, you know, tells us a little bit more about investor sentiment. Ask yourself, what are you expecting out of the vote? And what do you expect Tesla stock to do after the vote as well? But oftentimes, I will tell you that majority of people, whatever they're thinking, the market does the exact opposite of what most people are thinking. So that's also something to keep in mind because uh, market plays all these games uh, with us all the time. Now, coming over to Tesla. Now, this is the MoneyVest platform, which I said you could access in the internal launch with the uh, you know beta beta launch that we're doing at the end of this month, early July. Uh, link's going to be down below. You can lock in a pricing, which is going to be 51% off, including a 16% annual discount. So that's going to be 67% discount that you can access and you can lock that pricing in for life. But you can pretty much plot a lot of different amazing things here. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, show you a little bit more about the income statement right now. So you can see that from 2014, 182 billion, growing that to over 383 billion as of last year, gross profit also at over $169 billion compared to uh, 70 billion, you know, in 2014. So very, very nice, consistent growth. If I plot operating income, and then of course, net income as well, you'll start to notice the company obviously not profitable in the early years and now starting to become extremely profitable. Let me just go ahead and remove operating income and gross profit as well. 
and maybe even revenue just to give you a little bit of an idea. So you can see that again, negative, negative, negative in 2020, starting to turn positive and exponentially growing to profitability of almost 15 billion as of 2023. Now, we've also got something that's really cool, which is the MoneyVest metrics. And these are some of the metrics and criteria that I like to look at, right? These are 70 plus metrics that we've broken down into five different buckets, such as growth table. We've got the profitability table. We've got the efficiency table. We've got the financial table, which is financial health. And then we've got the valuation table as well. Now, these are some of the things that I like to look at. And these are check marks I've personally inputted, hard coded into the platform that you can see and have an idea of that. Okay, if I go back five years, right? If I go back seven years, how is Tesla really doing? How is the growth of the company, right? And what is the check mark? Is it high growth, stable, slow growth? What's the shares outstanding situation? Are they diluting shares? Are they not diluting shares? Are they buying back shares? If I go back the last five years, you'll notice that Tesla has issued shares, I mean, by 6% annually, which I've noted as very bad, right? So shares are going up, which is not good. And then revenue also very, very nice growth here, 35% Kager, gross profit 34%. Since Tesla was not profitable back in 2019, this is not able to be calculated in terms of CAGR. So we can come over the last three years and you'll notice the net income has gone up by over 179% every single year. So that's a very, very nice exponential growth and operating income at 64%, revenue 45%, 38% for gross profit. So last three years, really, we've seen high growth for every single category and only a 2.3% share dilution on an annualized basis. So that is, again, not very bad, but bad. Uh, when it comes to margins, we've got rapid expansion for gross margins, right? So we've got five per, uh, perfect score uh, for gross margins, operating margins of 12.75. So coming down a little bit compared to the average, actually. So this is going to be the average. Uh, this right here, You'll notice that 2023, we've got 18.25% uh, and then operating margins of 9% here, which obviously has been a little bit of a problem in the recent quarters in 2024. Uh, operating margins have been coming down. Gross margins have been coming down because cost of production is higher. Uh, prices, they've been cutting prices, which is obviously affecting their top line, which is the revenue. Uh, and for that reason, we're starting to see some worsening checks here for Tesla's margins. Operating cash flow margins, so we've got a little bit over 13.7%. And finally, we got free cash flow margins of 4.5%, which again has been going down as well, worsening compared to the average of 6.75% as well. Uh, now, if you come over to the efficiency table, so we do have pretty decent return on capital, return on equity, return on invested capital, and return on capital employed. Uh, when you compare that to the averages or basically the, uh, the compounded annual growth rate that we've seen, we do have somewhat efficient company operations. Uh, operating leverage is also very, very good, meaning that the, and again, this has been on a more recent basis. Uh, once you start plugging in these values for the last couple quarters, you will start to see the shift and the changes of how Tesla's operated because uh, operating leverage has been coming down because the, the reduction in the uh, prices is far significant compared to the reduction in the actual uh, cost, right? So in other words, operating income is growing at a much slower rate. If anything, it's going down on a year-over-year -year basis compared to revenue. What we really want to see and what this operating leverage basically tracks here is the change in operating income compared to the change in revenue. And if the change in operating income is growing at a faster rate compared to the change in change in revenue, what does that mean? The company That means the company has significant operating leverage. They're able to grow their operating income despite having a slower growth rate in revenue. So hope that makes sense. And a percentage of stock-based compensation as a percentage of revenue, so 2.5%. Uh, then we got 14% on average here, 13.67% as of 2023 for operating cash flow. And a percentage of free cash flow, we've got really high at over 41% for the company as well. And when it comes to the financial health, the company does have net debt. So that's exactly what we want. Current ratio is over one, quick ratio is over one, debt to free cash flow is a little bit over 1.2. Want this number to be under three. So that's also good. Total assets over total liabilities. I believe this is not correct. I have to check into that. And uh, total assets to total asset, total debt, actually. So 20 times. I think that's, that's pretty solid. And total assets, total liabilities, 2.42. Net debt to EBITDA is negative. So that's exactly what we want. So again, from a financial health standpoint, the company does score pretty solid at improving to good to excellent to very good. Uh, solvency ratio is also high and inventory is a percentage of total assets at 12.78% for the company as well. Now, in terms of valuation, now there is one more um, sort of function I have to write for this because right now you'll notice that 2023 based on valuations from 
you know, last year, 52 times earnings on average, 311 over the last three years. If I come over to, let's say, five years, you'll notice that right now we are looking at uh, on average 183 compared to 52.66. You know, last year, earnings yield of 1.9%, price sales over eight compared to just under 10 on average, and price free cash flow of just over 181 compared to 100, uh, which is the average year. Uh, and again, free cash flow yield of 0.55%. So the idea is, again, valuation tab is going to be fixed. It is not fully done. And if you come over to the analyst estimates, right? So uh, if you come over to, let's just do this. Uh, we're going to come over to analyst estimates here. Uh, you'll notice that EPS expectations on average for the next, uh, you know, six, seven years, we're expecting EPS to go from about 258 on average to over $14 per share by 2031. And we're also going to be including a couple columns here showing you the forward price earnings multiple and the year over year CAGR compounded annual growth rate expected from Tesla. And this is the revenue expectations of uh, just a little bit over 100 billion uh, and then expected to go up to as much as 432 billion on average. We're going to be working on the formatting for this as well. That's all going to be fixed before the beta launch. Uh, but the idea is that if you come over and analyze, right? So we're just going to use a discounted earnings multiple model. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to assume for, let's say, 14.9 almost 15 billion dollars in net income we're gonna we're gonna forecast for let's say seven years out okay and compounded annual growth rate we're gonna apply let's say a 20 percent growth rate with expected p multiple which obviously is very high right now i'm gonna go with 30 uh we're gonna do a discount rate of 12 percent 10 percent margin of safety and share dilution we're gonna do uh no share dilution because the last three years uh we have seen uh let me just go ahead and put this so right now i gotta fix this as well uh but for the most part uh, it is good. So we're going to do 1% share dilution over the next seven years from the company. Hit calculate. And we are looking at about $191 in estimated intrinsic value for the company. You can kind of see the whole calculation. If you scroll down 191 and kind of based on different P multiples and growth rates, uh, you can see where the intrinsic value would sit. Tesla right now, of course, is around $170. So now coming over to the, my YouTube music is open. So coming over to Tesla, 178.60 is where we're at, right? That's exactly why it's kind of showing us uh, a little bit undervalued here. Right now, the current share price is 173 on my platform because it's not real time and I'd still need to do a data sync. But 173 is what it's showing right now undervalued. Now, if I change the multiples a little bit, let's just go down to 25, uh, you know, $15 billion growing for the next seven years at a, let's say 18% or 16% compounded annual growth rate, 12% discount rate, 10% margin of safety, and we recalculate, right? So we're just going to uh, do this again. So we're going to do, let's just do this. 15 billion, we're going to do seven years. And uh, let's see, 16%. Uh, and we're going to apply about a 25 times P multiple. Uh, let's do about 1% share dilution again and 10% margin of safety, 12% uh, discount rate, hit calculate. And now we're looking at around $126 because of the lower growth rate and the lower P multiple for the company. If you do about 18% growth rate, um, still got to work this out because we got to clear and recalculate everything. So I know it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but we're going to figure that out as well. So seven years. We're going to do 25 and then 18% growth rate and about 1% share dilution. And now we're looking at about 142. And I was kind of like in the previous videos and in previous analysis, I've kind of analyzed the stock at around $150, $140 fair value, which I think makes more sense. It's on a more conservative basis for Tesla uh, compared to, uh, compared to of course, 190s, which can be a little bit more aggressive at over 20% growth rate at 30 times P multiple for the next seven years. So this is possible, although Tesla is going to have some hurdles. So if you come over to the earnings expectations, uh, you'll notice that, you know, we've got, Earnings declining for the year, so it's coming down in 2024 and then reaccelerating back up. You know, by 2027 and then accelerating back up even higher to as much as 10 to 14 dollars by 2031. So the four or five years following 2027 is also where the growth is uh, accelerating to the upside. Now coming over to the technical analysis. So this right here is going to be the entire breakdown. So week over week, we're really just seeing a lot of consolidation for Tesla, uh, huge resistance here. So there's going to be a lot of consolidation uh, or a lot of area of supply and resistance 
year for Tesla at around $197 to as much as $200 per share. Anything above that level, I'll be interested in selling calls, as you guys already know, and a massive support sitting at $153, $154 for Tesla at the moment. So we really need to see a breakout beyond this level in order for Tesla to break to higher highs and 250s and $300 is only possible if Tesla is able to break out above this $200 area of resistance and supply. So hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Again, if you want to get access to all of this amazing analysis and our money vest metrics, we're going to be working on this a little bit more. We're going to be refining the platform, uh, you know, over time. And again, you can plot a lot of really amazing things. So if I go over to the balance sheet, you can kind of compare our total cash versus total uh, liabilities here for the companies. So you can see the liabilities are clearly more than the total cash. Um, and then actually right now it's total assets. So total cash compared to total liabilities over here. Uh, and that's going to be the difference here. And then if you compare that to total debt, uh, we're going to plug in total debt as well. So long-term debt over here, that's uh, going to be all the way down here for the company, which has been coming down over the last three, four years. So you can plot really anything, even on a cash flow basis, you can come down, kind of look at free cash flow. It's going to be all the way down here. Uh, and for free cash flow, you can see that for Tesla, it's actually gone from being negative to now positive. Of course, 2023, you did see a little bit of a decline on a year over year basis. And of course, you can also plot for quarterly stuff as well. Uh, four quarters, eight, 12, 18, 16, 20 quarters. We're going back as many as, you know, basically five years worth of analysis here. So again, Tesla doesn't really have a lot of free cash flows here. So we're going to plug that number in. And there we go. We've got, again, quarterly numbers presented, uh, non-cash items. You know, you can also plug in uh, total cash from investing activities. So a lot of really amazing analysis is going to be available that you can kind of customize for yourself. So hope you all enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like. Again, links to our Discord Patreon is going to be down below. 51% discount available until a very, very limited time. So as always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.